Welcome back to KO's Workshop. We're gonna shoot a little video today on brazing. Hopefully it'll help you out. It's not gonna be no real long in-depth video, but hopefully it'll help you out, okay? So pay attention. I'm gonna use a book. I'm gonna do a little braze joint and we'll talk about it. And then hopefully when you go to braze, it'll help you out, okay? Oh, one thing I didn't mention. If you're working on a system, you want to flow nitrogen. Right? That's the proper way to do things. It really is. Okay, let me point out a few few things here that you may not be aware of. Uh, a lot of students in the beginning, they, they're not fully understanding of how brazing is done. Uh, but if you look here, I just want to show you something. Uh, and this is an older version of the book. Uh, there's, there's new additions, and they all say the same thing. But in figure 720, it says two examples of capillary attraction. On the left are two pieces of glass spaced closely together. Uh, when the pieces of glass are inserted in water, capillary attraction draws the water into the space between them. Uh, the reason I point that out is because the same thing is happening when you go to braze, okay? You're heating the copper. The copper is what then melts the filler material not the flame of your torch. And a lot of guys get that wrong, uh, guys and gals alike. They will braze and they'll heat this filler material as they're brazing and they think that's what's causing this to take place. So you heat the base metal, which is your copper. As that reaches critical temperature, you then will melt your filler material. As this starts to stick to it, you can tap on that as you're heating your copper up. As it starts to stick to it, you are almost there. Your critical temperature is almost there. And if you look on this side, uh, it's figure 719 if you have this particular book, but it tells you where brazing temperatures, uh, the range occurs. Okay, so it's 12 to 1500 degrees, basically. Soldering is done at a much lower temperature. While it is uh, the same technique, uh, it's a much lower temperature and a different filler material. All right, so I uh, just wanted to point that out and uh, see if that helps you uh, in your, your journey to start brazing and, and get a, a better understanding of what's going on as you, as you braze. So again, the noise uh, is kind of high when you're, when you're trying to braze because of the nature of what you're doing. So it's hard to talk. Uh, when I'm brazing, but I do, I will show you a quick little clip of, of a braze joint. But what you're, what you're wanting to do, obviously if it's a new system or you've done a repair and you're, you're brazing it back together, you will want to clean it, uh, especially if you have any oxidized pipe, you'll want to clean it, use flux according to the book, uh, do everything your, your training is, is teaching you, uh, and you won't have any issues. But again, you'll want to uh, start out heating the uh, male portion of the copper, and then you'll move the heat to the female portion or the, the, the fitting, whether it be a 90 or a coupling or whatever the case may be. Same as, as if you just uh, switch joint it or whatever. Uh, but that's how you're, you're going to apply your heat. You'll heat this the male portion first, right? Then you'll move the torch to the female portion. You'll stay on this portion with your torch. And as you do that, that capillary attraction occurs uh, and will suck that filler material into the joint and around the whole joint uh, and then fill that in. And what you want is a nice e even or smooth transition from the pipe to the fitting. Uh, if you ran your fingernail or something across it, you wouldn't want to feel a hard lip on that. You just want a smooth transition. Uh, and that way you know you've got enough filler material and you're not going to get a call back or have a potential leak down the road. All right, so again, I'll cut to the little clip where I do a braze joint. But hopefully that was helpful for you. And if it was, like it, subscribe, and smash that notification button. Apparently that does something for me. And we'll see you on the next one.
so that's what you're after right there. You just want a nice, smooth transition uh, when you run your thumbnail across that. You don't really want to hang up on that with your thumbnail, uh, but you just want to apply enough to where you know uh, you'll be successful there and you won't have a leak or a, a callback. All right, hopefully that helps you, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.